Hello YouTubers, Captain Helmet 69 here, doing a video on behalf of Scala U2. Uh, today's topic is homemade dirt CO2 systems. Uh, now first of all, you'll notice from previous video uploads, there's quite a few dramatic changes which have been made with this aquarium. Um, Richard's been hard at it for a good couple of days. Uh, he's pretty much got rid of, I'd say, probably 60-70% of the plants, as you can see. Um, he's put in a new rock feature and as you can see with the fish they do look a bit happier in my opinion they've got a bit more room to, to swim about and in general they look a lot better so right on to today's topic as you can see here we've got all the tackle and uh, Richard's going to explain in detail first of all how he made it and how to operate it so over to Richard Hello everybody Yes, I'm Richard. Uh, this is my aquarium. Uh, I'd like to explain today about the CO2 system. I got into CO2, I read about it in a book, basically, and the, the, the benefits of it are really quite good, actually. Uh, it gives your plants... It'll improve the growth by at least 50%. And what I'd like to show you is, all you need to start with a basic CO2 system is, if you've got a big aquarium like mine, this is 400 litres, I had to have four two litre bottles. Now what I did with that is I took the tops off, made a hole in the tops, as you can see, put an airline through it, stuck it with silicon on the inside to make a watertight bond, one done. And that's how you do it. Then that goes from that one, this is if you've got a big system, to a T piece, same again from that piece to that piece. Another tea system there to that one. So then I got three bottles. This bottle here, all it is is a reservoir. Now what it does, when you add your solution to this, well I'll tell you about it very shortly. Any material that ferments and comes through these lines, it'll filter in this bottle at first, bubble out, and then it'll go through there without no liquid coming up. Because as you can see in this bottle, this is a reservoir, we've got one line longer than the other one. Now the other one is obviously that's coming out of the bottle and that then goes into your aquarium. On this side you will have either an air stone or a glass diffuser or something of that nature to disperse the bubbles. Now the hardest one of the three to do is this one actually because it's quite tight in the lid. As you can see you have to make two holes. The long one is coming from three bottles going in to the water. So any ferment fermentation or rubbish coming out of those three bottles goes into there and it stays in the water. The bubbles, one, one, you want one, probably two to three a second really, if you can get that. Comes up the bubbles into there, the pressure builds up, it then sends pressure from this bottle down this pipe into the aquarium. This is a check valve. This stops any water from siphoning back from the aquarium into the bottles. That's quite an important feature. Put a check valve on. They're only a few pence, they're not expensive. Right. Forget about three, because this is for my aquarium, a big tank. Most aquariums, you can be quite adequate to just have the one. You've only got the one. It's quite simply all you need. Same thing, one line from that watertight top again into this bottle with one coming out, just the same. Only use the other two if you've got a bigger aquarium. Or two if you've got a medium sized aquarium. Right, I will now talk about the mixture. I use just normal, suitable bread makers yeast. It's quite adequate. That's that. Sugar. Now you can use white or brown. I found brown to be better because of the molasses in it. It's better food for the yeast. Now what you do first of all is you get some yeast, in a bottle this size I would say a teaspoon is adequate. Slightly heaped, place that into a little container, add some warm water, not too hot, just warm, tepid, stir it up, activate it, add some sugar, just a, just a, just a spoonful and leave it. That's what you call activating the yeast. Now in the meantime while that's activating, as you can see on this bottle here, the amount of sugar you want to add really is around about a cupful, which will take the sugar level in a bottle bot, bottle to around about there. 
The rest is then filled up to this line with tepid water. And that's all you need to do. You will then put the lid on. Well, you won't put the lid on actually. What you'll do is, when you've added that, put your finger in the bottle and give it a good shake. This is just clear water. But I would be adding, obviously, yeast if I was doing it. You shake it up like that. Leave it. That should like separate your sugar in the warm water. By which time your yeast has now activated. Pour your yeast into your bottle. That's when something like this comes in handy at cone. In the top, you pour your yeast in. Take it out, finger in the top, take another quick shake, put the lid on. Within about anything between two and six hours, it'll start to ferment. Depending on your room temperature and the temperature of the water, it's very important you don't have your water too hot. If it's too hot, you'll kill the yeast. And basically, that's the same you do that for all the three bottles. And that's it. You then put your lid back on. These can go in a nice place under an aquarium. Another tip I'll give you is, if you can, if you've got a small tray, if you've got more than one bottle, to place them on the tray and then put some electrician tape down to keep the bottles together. The res reservoir goes separately. That's into your tank. And that's basically it. You need to replace that mixture, I'd say, once every fortnight, really. Uh, because it'll get to a saturation point where it's no longer, it's not beneficial anymore. But the, you will notice a big difference, and it's relatively cheap to do, and relatively easy. Now, that's what I started with. And it was very successful, but I got to the point where I was, you know, you've got to be very careful with these joints, and they can leak from time to time. No matter how well you do them, you, you sometimes, with a pressure builder, you sometimes get a leak. It's very difficult to get them put. This system, I, it still works now, but this system I bought, and I, it was very cheap. As you can see, the price is still on it. It was only £18.23. The JBL Pro Flora Bio 80. And with that, it's the same thing as you can see on the front. You get the container, the sugar, and a little sachet of yeast. But you get, which is great, this glass diffuser. And that's brilliant. So it's the same thing basically, but it's obviously not homemade. This is the glass diffuser running, as you can see. It's in the corner there, bubbling away. Now I've got it underneath my filter intake on my external filter. What's happening is the bubbles are coming through the diffuser, they're going into the intake, getting dispersed even more, and then they're coming back into the aquarium with that 100% dispersion, which is what you're after really, because if you don't have, if you have bubbles just bubbling simply to the top, it's just wasting the atmosphere. So if you can, if you do it with an airstone, like I explained earlier on your own main system, all you've got to do is make sure when you put your airstone in, place it near your filter inlet, and you'll find it'll go into your filter, and the impeller will chop the bubbles up even smaller, and you'll have better diffusion. But it really does make a difference to your plants. But again, this is very important. If you're doing a homemade system, I would recommend you always use the reservoir, just for safety. And I think that's it. If you've got any questions on that, you can either contact me or Chris, Scala U2, or Captain Helmet 69. So thank you, hope that's been beneficial, and good luck. <laughs>